Okay, light. That's our topic for today. We're going to be looking at lenses, diverging lenses. This is talking about example number one. We're here at BHS located in Fundan Fundalia. And uh, this is Corona video number 11. All right, so the first thing we got to do is we got to draw in our x axes. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just produce an x axis right down the middle of our paper. And then we're going to produce a y axis going vertically on perpendicular to the x. And then we're going to draw what we call a converging lens. So converging lenses are a bit different. You have to make sure that you make them fat on the ends and then draw them up so they're skinny on the middle. So the skinniest part of the lens is at the very middle of the lens. So fat on the end and skinny in the middle. This time around we're going to use the same thing we've been using except the focal is now negative. Don't forget that lenses have two focals. This will be the positive side of the lens and the negative side. Let's go over and we'll do our positive focal first. One, two, three, four, five focal. Let's go back into the negative now. One, two, three, four, five focal, and then we have our two focal points. For our math, we'll be using this focal. The reason we want to use this focal for math is because the rays have a tendency to move away, or where they would intersect would be virtual. So our object is going to be located at 8, and yes, we're going to put it on the negative side of the lens, even though it's a positive number. And the reason for that is because of the direction of the rays. So we count over 5, 6, 7, 8, label it O for object, and we're going to give it a height of 3. All our rays will begin at the top of the arrow. And we're going to follow our three ray rules. Ray rules are based on how it comes in and then how it leaves. So the way we come in to start is we're going to come in based on parallel, and then we're going to leave so that we line up here with the negative focal. Now once we've used that focal, we won't use it again. It's a one-time deal. So we want to base it on the negative focal. For ray number two, we want to come in and we want to use the positive focal. So try to get to this. So we're going for it, right? We're trying to get to it. Of course, we'll hit the lens and we'll change directions and we'll leave parallel. So that's this one right here. So we tried to get to the positive focal. We never actually went through it. We just based it on it. And then we left parallel. So we just leave parallel. And then for our, our last ray rule, we hit the only flat part of this curved lens and we just keep on going. So we line it up top of the arrow to the origin and then we just keep on going. It's an easy ray to draw. Now you can see that this is going to be virtual because they're never intersecting. So we have to see where the refracted rays would intersect by tracing them back into space. So I trace my first one back. Then I'm going to trace my second one back. Remember, it's the refracted or bent rays that we're going to be using here. Trace this one back. And then, you know, you can't really trace back this one because it's the exact same line. It's a straight line, so we trace it back. So when we're all said and done, we're like, oh, here it is. Here's our image. It's more or less there. So I for image. So I'm going to count over one, two, three. So the distance to my image in this problem will be negative three, meaning it's virtual, meaning that you can't project it. So we'll just kind of set up some answers right here. So the distance to the image, I found it to be one, two, three. 3, negative 3. The height of the image, it's about 1.5. HI, 1.5. Magnification, we can solve for magnification by comparing the image height to the object height. So we've got 1.5 to 3, that's pretty much a half, so we'll just say times 0.5. That means that it's reduced. So it's time to describe. How would we describe this image? We would describe this image as virtual. This image is also erect. And this image is reduced. So we have a, a virtual, erect, reduced image that we produced. Now, 
everybody's favorite, it's time to do some math associated with this. So we'll bring our Gibbons along for the ride here. Let's begin with lens makers. So your classic mistake that you might make when trying to do the math on a problem like this is forgetting that the focal is negative. If you forget that the focal is negative, you're essentially doing a converging lens. So you want to make sure to avoid that. This time we said the distance to the object, which was given, was 8. So we have 8 here. So common denominator might be negative 40, for example. So this would become 5 fortieths, and this would become 8, four, negative 8 fortieths, and then this would be 1 over di still. And then we'd subtract this from the other side. So as we subtract it, the number gets bigger, and we get negative 13 fortieths. And so that equals 1 over di. So we must take the reciprocal. So di is going to be equal to negative 40 thirteenths. So that's going to give you about 3 and 1 thirteenth. 3 and 1 thirteenth is, well, time to use the calculator. I don't know my thirteenths very well. All right. So we got uh, 40 divided by 13 is 3.076. We'll say 3.08. That's going to be the distance to the image, and it's negative. Let's just compare that to our graph answers. For graphing answers, we had negative 3. Uh, so, you know, not horrible. Only off by 8 hundredths. It's probably the best that I've accomplished so far in these videos, to only be off by 8 hundredths. All right, so let's move on now, and let's talk a little bit about magnification. So magnification can be found by another equation, hi over ho. It also equals negative di over do. It's called the magnification equation. So let's solve for it. The height of the image is what we want to find uh, eventually. But before we do that, we have to plug in what we just solved for. So we're going to put in negative 308 up here. And for the object distance, we'll put in 8. And so once again, I'm going to have to use my calculator. So let's say that we had uh, negative 3.08, and then we divided it by 8, and we get a magnification of 0.388, negative 0.385. Up oh, positive, because it's negative of a negative, right? So the magnification is expressed as times... 0.385. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in on my little uh, note here that we've been working on. 0.3. I guess we haven't started one yet. How about that? So we got uh, distance to image was negative 3.08 and magnification was 0.385. Now in addition in finding magnification, we must also find the height of the image. So my height of my image here can be found by taking the magnification and setting it equal to hi over ho and putting in 3 for ho. So we'll take our previous answer here and we'll simply multiply it times the height. That gives me negative. Oh, forgot to make a negative before, so that's positive. 1.155. So we'll say 1.16, and that'll work. And what we did when we found it before was 1.5. So that's a reasonable uh, answer to get for this kind of thing. Okay, so that's how we do it when the object is far away. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you another ray trace for it when it's close, and I'm not going to worry about the, the math. So we're only going to do one example this time rather than two because the math works out identical. So I will, I will go through and do a ray trace for this scenario right here. So once again, I'll throw in my x-axis and I'll move it so that it's only three away from the, from the lens. And I'll run you through a quick ray trace on that. And then that way you won't have to watch it. A whole nother video here. So
So once again, diverging, fat on the ends, skinny in the middle. And then we've got our positive side of the lens and the negative side of the lens. Put in our focals. They were five and negative five. Remember, lenses have two focals. One, two, three, four, five. Focal. Go back the other way. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. Here we go. And then we're going to put in our object. Three and three. So we remember, we're going to plot this on negative, even though it's a positive number. One, two, three. Object. Plot up. One, two, three. Remember, it's because the rays go to the right that DO is positive. So, time to put in our rays. Ray rule one, come in parallel. How do we leave? Through the focal. Notice the rays are going away from the x-axis. That's where the name diverging comes from. It's diverging from the x. Ray two, we try to approach the positive focal. So we attempt to get there, and we can't. So we leave parallel. So we get something like that. Then we have ray three, the only flat part of the mirror. Sorry, lens. Keep on going. Where this traces back is going to be where our image will form. So take every refracted or bent ray and bring it on back. You can see I don't have a ton of room here to make this happen. It's starting to look like a mess. We might zoom in a couple times, see if it can get a little bit clearer for you here. So we're going to take this one on back too. And so where that thing is intersecting is what we're interested in. So right here was our intersection, and that would be our image. And I would say, if I'm trying to find some graph answers for this, just to be complete, even though I think you got the idea. <clears throat> if we want some graph answers, I would say distance to image. Let's count. About one and three quarter. Negative 1.75 would be my distance to my image. Height of the image. Uh, maybe two. Height of image. Positive 2. And last but not least, how about magnification? So when I compare, this is 3, this is 1.75, or 1 and 3 quarter. So 1.75 divided by 3 is 0.58. So my magnification would be a positive 0.58 because it's erect. So describing it, it's on the negative side, okay? Negative side means virtual. Uh, it's also smaller. The image is smaller than the object, so it's reduced. And it's pointing up, so it's erect. So same as last time. So the big thing to remember about this type of lens is that it always produces this. It always makes it smaller. It always makes it virtual. It always makes it erect. It can't flip because the focal is virtual. And if you have a virtual focal, you can't cross it. So you will always get these same results, just like we saw for the uh, convex mirror. So ray traces are very similar. Math is very similar. And, uh, and then hopefully this will help you when it comes time to do your, your problem set. We'll stop here. Um, just to let you know, next week, we're going to be getting into some FETs with this, uh, talking a little bit more about refraction, specifically something called Snell's Law, and then we'll have the quiz also coming up this next end of this next week. So we'll stop here. Any questions, you know, you can message me in Canvas, and uh, that'll be it for